Hello and welcome back to this course, covering the exam topics for the JNCIS ENT certification. In this section of the course, we're reviewing ISIS concepts, configuration, and monitoring in Junos. In this lesson, we'll be covering an overview of ISIS, or Intermediate System to Intermediate System. Most network administrators and engineers are familiar with OSPF as a link state protocol, which we learned in a previous lesson means that each participating node builds a map of the network to calculate the least cost path to any destination. ISIS is another link state protocol, which I generally find that far fewer engineers are familiar with. In this lesson, we'll set you apart from the pack and start learning about ISIS. First, let's take a look at what exactly ISIS is. ISIS is an interior gateway protocol based on the SPF algorithm, which is the same algorithm used by OSPF to use link state information to inform routing decisions. A primary difference between OSPF and ISIS is that ISIS was developed for use with the OSI protocol suite to route ISO CLNP packets rather than IP packets. In 1990, ISIS was extended to support IPv4 packet routing, and this revision to ISIS was called Integrated ISIS. Being that ISIS was not initially developed by the IETF, it was not first published as an RFC, but rather as an ISO IEC in 10589. Later revisions were published as RFCs shown here. Now, before we move into the next slide, there are a few items I want to draw your attention to in the diagram here. First, note that we still have the same concept of areas in ISIS as we do in OSPF. However, a router is wholly contained within an area, rather than just its interfaces. Also, we have these delineations for routers of L1, L2, and L1 slash L2, which we'll discuss the importance of this in the following slide. On this slide, we have some terms and concepts that you'll want to be familiar with to better understand the operation of ISIS. First, just like in OSPF, a continuous ISIS domain or network is referred to as an autonomous system. Within an ISIS autonomous system, we have intermediate systems and end systems. An end system, or ES, is any client machine, or end host, which is connected to the network. These are workstations, servers, phones, etc. An intermediate system is a router. Routers can send or receive packets themselves, or route or forward traffic. The information that ISIS-speaking routers exchange to build a map of the network are called Protocol Data Units, or PDUs. Just like OSPF, there are several types of PDUs that ISIS uses, which we'll cover in detail in a later lesson. As we saw in the diagram, ISIS also has a concept of areas. Although, as we'll see, those areas behave a bit differently in ISIS than in OSPF. Though we also saw in the diagram that an entire router is within the area. The links are the area boundary, rather than the interface or router. In the diagram as well, we saw the L1 and L2 designations. These represent Level 1 and Level 2 routers and L1 slash L2 routers are ones which act as both a level 1 and level 2 router. This level is primarily important when it comes to areas, as only level 2 adjacencies may cross area borders. Because of this, level 2 routers are considered backbone routers. 
Finally, something to note is that ISIS also has the concept of the designated router, or DR, for broadcast segments. This router type performs the same function as the DR in OSPF to help limit the flooding of advertisements on broadcast segments. We mentioned that ISIS exchanges PDUs to propagate routing information. Let's take a closer look at that concept. The ISIS link state PDU is very similar to the concept of the OSPF LSA and LSU. It should be noted, though, where OSPF LSU packets are contained within an IP header, ISIS PDUs are not. The ISIS PDUs are contained directly within a Layer 2 protocol header, an Ethernet header, rather than an IP header. When ISIS was being developed, it was done so with the extensibility in mind. The PDU standard was created with TLV fields, or type length value fields. These fields have a type identifier to describe the type of information contained in the value, a length field to describe the total length of the TLV, and then a value to describe the information being transported. This allowed for IP reachability information to be built into ISIS easily, through the addition of new TLV definitions to standardize the exchange of the reachability information. Now, throughout this lesson, I've been making some comparisons between ISIS and OSPF. Let's take a look at a slide with some of their similarities and example topology of each. The diagram on the right is a sample ISIS topology, and on the bottom is a sample OSPF topology. Initially, we can see the routers define the area boundaries in OSPF, where the links in the ISIS topology are the area boundaries. Both OSPF and ISIS are link state protocols and even use the same algorithm to determine the shortest path to each destination in the network. They also both use a hello packet with some initial information contained to establish neighbor adjacencies. Additionally, even though the terms are different, both OSPF and ISIS use a two-level hierarchical architecture. Where OSPF has the backbone area, area 0, ISIS has level 2 routers, which are backbone routers. Finally, another similarity is that both protocols use the concept of a designated router for the same purpose. However, as we'll see in a later lesson, ISIS does not have a BDR, only a DR. I appreciate you working through the overview of ISIS with me. I hope that this lesson has been informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.